Hello and welcome to another video by the AIM Academy. Now previously we unboxed and calibrated the Einscan HX by Shining 3D, a handheld hybrid scanner. Now why is it hybrid? Because it can do both visible LED light or blue light laser lines. Uh, for today I want to look at the blue light laser line scan mode. So I've got this front, it is from a scooter, uh, so like it would sit like uh, this basically. Uh, with headlights uh, going in here, this is where the uh, turn signals would be, and the front wheel of the scooter being right here. So I want to scan this, uh, and I've got markers plastered all over it, because laser scan mode needs markers to see the model. These markers are included with the scanner when you buy it, but you can also order them afterwards. So I'm going to click in the software on laser scan, and... Um, Unlike when you scan with LED light, we have far fewer um, customization options for this scan uh, process right here. So uh, the only alignment mode that is available when laser scanning is markers. So it doesn't even give you that an, as an option. Laser light can also not pick up surface textures, so surface colors. So it also doesn't give us that as an option. Instead, all I have is resolution. Now for a model like this, I really, really don't want to select a 0.05 millimeters. That is way too fine and will make the entire process painfully slow, uh, extremely uh, computer power intensive, and just create a massive size 3D model, which is completely unnecessary for our intents and purposes. Instead, for a model this large, I could probably leave it at low detail, which equals 1.0 millimeters between the points. Once more, and I can't stress this enough, resolution does not equal accuracy. This is the distance between any two points within the point cloud that is generated by the highly accurate scan. I'm gonna leave it, I could leave it on low, but uh, I wanna keep it on medium detail here just for demonstration purposes and uh, scan this way. So I'm gonna click apply. And this resolution, you should always adjust this to your needs, to your specific use case, and to the model size that you're scanning. So I've kept it on medium. Now what you can see at the side is I have three different selections. I can go for normal, reflective, or black. These are presets uh, of the other two settings down here, the brightness and the data setting, to uh, yield the best results. And I'm gonna start out with normal, trying to pick up this scooter front. So once again, I just press the start button on the back. Um, the brightness setting for the lasers only has six steps, and it's far less important than with the uh, than with the uh, regular LED light. Uh, then I'm going to press the start button on the back once more to go from the preview into the actual model scan. Um, I'm going to go right into scanning the point cloud. If you have very large models or very complex models that you need an extremely high accuracy for, I recommend first just scanning the markers and only markers, and then generating the point cloud in a next step. So I'm going to try and pick everything up here. Actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this real quick, remove my scanned data so far, and start a stopwatch in the corner. So I'm going to press this button. That should have done it. Yes, OK. And we're going to see how quickly I can actually produce a result that I am mostly satisfied with. Right here, I want this little front grill from all the sides, all the ridges. I really want to pick all of that up, and I want this back plate. There we go, that looks good. Get the side panel. Okay. And you can see the experience is quite painless, quite fast. The uh, scanner really doesn't weigh a whole lot either. I think it's about 700 grams or so. Uh, so it's no problem if I had to use this for a more extended amount of time. And if you notice this scanning not being as smooth, constantly uh, getting stuck or something, then you probably have not applied enough markers to your model. It is one of the biggest learning curves that I have found with uh, blue light laser scanning is where to place the markers and at what distances and how many uh, to yield the best results while not compromising your scan speed. Uh, and they aren't that expensive that you really need to conserve them uh, that much. So now I'm just gonna rotate my little table here, pick up the other side before I move to the top. So I'm gonna pick all this up, that looks good. 
move around to the side. Okay. Look at everything here. There we go. That looks good. So I can go all the way down here. Do another pass. Of that surface. Okay, that looks good. Still got a hole here. Try and get that. Why doesn't it fill that up? So that's refusing. Okay. I think this looks pretty good. Uh, I've got most of these surfaces picked up in a good way, but almost all the connection points, I can try and get that a bit better. Okay. Yeah, I think this. Uh, this will suit my needs just fine. Press stop there, press stop there, so the stopwatch stops. Great. So this would be my 3D model for this scooter front. And um, the, the result actually looks really nice already. But of course, what I've done once again is scanned a little bit of my table. Now, because I've got markers on the table as well, there's a really easy way to get rid of it by selecting cutting plane, then using markers. And now I simply select at least three, but uh, I'll do four of the markers that I scanned that are on the table that I want to remove. So pick number three there and then number four over here. Click create plane. And you can see how that is placed through all of these markers and thus underneath my model. And if I just click apply, it'll get rid of all the unnecessarily scanned area, only leaving me with my 3D model that I actually want. A tiny bit residue over here. Uh, and this would just get calculated out during the uh, mesh generation process, but I can also just select it by holding down shift and uh, delete, and then delete this area as well. Click the uh, check mark at the bottom to accept my modifications. And then, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. This is the scooter front. So I'm gen gonna generate a point cloud out of this. As per usual, uh, this can be fairly intense on your computer resources. I hope I'm not lagging too much just now during this process. Um, as the software is trying to generate a coherent point cloud out of your scan result. Little bits of scanned surface, like the last bit that I just deleted a second ago, would automatically be eliminated during this process, uh, as they are so small and unnecessary that the software says, okay, this doesn't belong to my model itself. I can get rid of this. So going to wait a bit more until this is done. Okay, perfect. So it's got our uh, meshed point cloud now. Well, it's not meshed yet, but it's a point cloud. We can even see the writing that was on the side. It picked that up quite nicely. Um, I don't think... Yeah, the accuracy this time and the uh, mostly the resolution wasn't good enough to actually read the uh, sticker that was on it as well. Uh, that sometimes works if you have a higher resolution. Not that it's necessary, it's just a fun little uh, tidbit. But the rest of this looks really, really good. I'm quite satisfied with this result. Uh, so I'm going to mesh a model out of this. Once more, this is entirely dependent on the speed of your computer and uh, your use case, whether you want an unwatertight or watertight model. Once again, I'm going to stick with an unwater type model, a water type one. We'll calculate all of these holes closed. That is something we do not need to do right now because, well, this is just a single surface model. I, I don't need it uh, as a closed one. And I'll click apply, letting the software calculate. I'll be right back once this is done. Perfect. 
our model is fully meshed and now we uh, can, well, work with it. We can save it as an STL file, as an OBJ file, import it into any CAT software and then keep working with it there. Uh, I could still, you know, refine my mesh using the simplification, the smoothing, removing small floating parts, all of these options that are uh, given to me by the Shining 3D software, but I'm quite satisfied with this result and will just simply save my scan as an STL file. You can see I could select other uh, formats as well and just call it the scooter. Uh, I think I mistyped it. Yes, I did. I had a typo in there, scooter front. Save that to my desktop. Uh, I get to scale it if I want to. So I could uh, zoom it out or in, just click apply, it'll save it. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Now, it worked really, really well with this model that I could put a lot of markers on. Scanning the dinosaur skull, that is uh, all organic surfaces and stuff where I can't really put markers on top of, would have been a nightmare to scan in laser mode. Instead, this is a prime example for the L visible LED light. Um, however, for this model, the laser scan worked really, really well. I'm very satisfied with the result. And uh, yeah, that's, that's basically it. So uh, thank you very much for watching. That's all I have for you in this video. Next time around, we'll still scan a smaller part uh, like this one, um, which can be used for uh, quality assurance or the scan of it can then be used for quality assurance uh, measurements. So, um, yeah, thanks very much for watching. If you do have any questions or comments, please, please leave them below. Subscribe if you like these videos and want to see more like them. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks.